I figured everybody had muted themselves individually because I didn't do it at this end. Yep, you're right. Ernie, is that you? In the meeting. You hear me? Right. Yeah, we can hear you. Well, yeah, that's all you got to do. That's great. Um, Brian is not here, so you as the co-chair uh, need to open the meeting. Okay. Uh, let me see what the heck I've got in front of me here. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to open the meeting uh, of tonight's uh, Ashby Board of Health at uh, 6.15 p.m. Uh, and we can, we can uh, open it up. Do uh, you want to do new business first? Yeah, and you're going to have to put it out there because. Yeah. Um, uh, you can't do the expense warrants until you do them in person. So we'll skip those. And uh, you want to do, go to number two? Go ahead. The review and approval okay. of the meeting minutes. Okay, oh, let's see. Yeah, we'll go to approving the meeting minutes. Of, and the date on that is, what's the date? January 6th. January 6th, okay, hold on. 2022. January 6, 2022. Request and motion and approved minutes. Okay. Um, so I I make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from January 6, 2022. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. Hey, Glenn. Yeah. I think what you're going to need to do, I want to transfer uh, where over to our, our other member and have her, because uh, she's got pot paperwork. She's got stuff in front of her. I got nothing. This is okay. terrible. I know what you're doing. I know I know it all. I've looked at it all. I've gone over it all, but I got nothing in front of me. It's crazy. Okay. I can't get this yeah, I know, I, I I know you. Yeah. I know your internet's down, so you can't you can't get to your um your computer. So um, my internet is definitely down. Yeah. And I don't know why. I can't figure it out. But I got nothing going on here, so. I can, I'm going to need uh, our, our uh, third person. All right. Of, all right. Okay, so you, would you like me to lead the meeting, Glenn? Yeah, yeah, go ahead and uh, do the next one, yep. Okay, so the third thing we have is review of septic installation permit uh, for 38 Quail Hollow Road, uh, John and Marion Gate. I pronounced that correctly. So, Glenn, yeah, do you want to? Matt Costa is here to uh, represent that, but I'll do a. I'll start it off. Um, a request has been submitted for the board to approve the septic installation permit. So a building permit can be issued and the new owner can take possession of the property. Uh, the designing engineer has requested that additional time be granted for the approval of the phosphorus unit by the plumbing board. Uh, the engineer has spelled out a feasible path for approval, but should the plumbing board not give the phosphorus unit a pass, the ZBA and the ZBA doesn't approve the 
uh, Bousse and phosphorus unit outside, then the original variance approved by the board is suspect. If the phosphorus unit is not approved, then the options are to allow the Bousse to be used without the phosphorus unit or revert back to the consistent decision of requiring a composting toilet and a Title V system. I'm not sure the best option is to have a septic treatment unit above ground and a shed that may be exposed to the elements. So um, that's um, Matt is here to represent the, the property. Thanks, Glenn. For the record, Matt Costa, Cape and Islands Engineering, uh, on behalf of the applicant. So in, in simple terms, what's going on is we're going through the DEP approval process for the WUSA system uh, with the phosphorus add-on. So this is a site-specific pilot. Uh, and DEP then wanted uh, the technology proprietor to go back to the plumbing board because their uh, permit was under their jurisdiction because of the unit inside the, the dwelling um, to get verification on the additional tank. Uh, the plumbing board said you need new approval. That wasn't uh, anticipated. It's a slow process. Uh, so it's not a situation where we are concerned about gaining approval. It's a situation of time because this property is under agreement. Uh, the person, the prospective buyer is the applicant. They put a lot of time and money into this. Uh, there is a, a specific date that we, they need to perform by. Um, they're comfortable enough closing on the property, understanding that, you know, that probability of gaining the necessary approvals for the septic system is is in the high 90s it's it we're not concerned about not gaining the approval uh the issue is the time so we're we're asking that the board allow glenn to sign off on the septic permit uh with special um with a contingency that the septic system uh, be uh, resolved and installed prior to use and occupancy, which would be obvious because you would need a certificate of compliance for any septic installations to get use and occupancy. So there's levers there in place to ensure nobody can move into the house or do anything or use the house until the septic system's resolved. However, the purchase and sales contingent on them getting a building permit. So they can't get the building permit without the septic, without Glenn signing off on the septic. And they can't close on it without the billing permit. So that's the situation. So we're asking the board to allow Glenn to sign off on that. Um, and that in turn will give us time to square uh, the permit away, get things in place where we could pull a construction works permit to install the system, gain certificate of compliance for that. That should be, bring the Board of Health's world into compliance that would get them to the to the uh, doorstep of use and occupancy, barring building code issues. So um, that's it in a nutshell. I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Matt. Um, so that, that that is it. That is it. Ernie, go ahead. I'm good. Okay. Um, so that. What you're asking for essentially is that permit will be issued and a building permit may be issued once the septic permit is allowed. So that gives them the right to build the structure and, um, and at least the Title V system outside, but not the, uh, or the Bousset system could be installed, but not the phosphorus unit. All of that sound, um, what you're proposing right and we couldn't get certificate of compliance on the septic system until we resolved the complete treatment chain the the, right. the phosphorus added. right yeah we, we wouldn't issue compliance until all the aspects of the design plan are met right but it's um it's still a big a big ask to um have a structure built when the septic isn't totally approved so um 
how does the board feel about um, that there was an approval that was granted back in August of 2020 where there were conditions set for the the DEP approval of the piloting um, approval for the Busse system and the phosphorus unit. So um, if you do make any changes, you're revising that uh, approval that was issued back in August of 2020. Yeah, and so there is protections uh, in place to ensure the end result. I mean, what we're trying to do is get a system in the ground to remove phosphorus, and when they they're not going to be able to use that house until they do that. And there's legal mechanisms there through the certificate of compliance that would just absolutely prevent that. So, yeah, this is unconventional. Uh, and it's a unique situation. And we are coming hat in hand to the board on this, understanding it is it is unique. Yeah, in, in Glenn's words, it's a big ask, but there's protections there. Um, we're not asking to do uh, and to use the house or anything like that. Um, we're just we're just asking to essentially buy some time by way of this. We're not even going to go and install the system or start construction on the house. Um, he's got to get the septic uh, in order and he's got some time to, to do that. Um, that's not their intention, uh, but there is a legal mechanism there to, to ensure that there would be no use of that house until that system was installed correctly. Glenn, what's your recommendation on this? Uh, I, my, my worry is that the, there may not be an approval and I think we have to at least plan the, the contingency that the phosphorus unit is not approved. Um, I just uh, think that those contingencies need to be put in place. If it's not, it, is, it may be unlikely that that happens, but... Um, Well, you did suggest, I believe you just suggested um, alternative conditions uh, and, and if then, so if it didn't get approved, then this would be your options. And we're, we're, we're absolutely fine with that. We would, the onus would also be on the applicant if they didn't get approval for this treatment tank on the Busse, we would essentially need to solve that problem and come back to the board and, and have that uh, a solution presented um, to, to solve that problem. It could be a use of another phosphorus removal system. It could be the use of maybe a, a, a accessory structure outside um, that might be heated and that might be able to um, alleviate your concerns. Uh, we That would be on us to come back to you to, to solve that. But if you wanted to have a condition in there to say, if it didn't get approved, then you need to come back to the board for a new approval of a new system or variances of this or, or to modify the variance um, or, or to install a compositing toilet or something like that, which would make you feel comfortable. We're totally agreeable to that. Okay, I had, I had made those comments to the board as far as um, alternate uh, options that may include a composting toilet or um, uh, or the use of the Busse without the phosphorus unit, but um, that, that would be up to the board. So my one question for you, Matt, is that um, I'm getting the understanding that you're requiring that additional time and so do you have a certain time frame of how much time that is going to take? Do you have anything in motion for that? Uh, far longer than uh, a time specific, we don't know. Uh, okay. We think it's gonna be several more months, um, but their, their purchase and sales running out in a matter of weeks at this point. Um, so uh, it, we know for sure it will exceed that purchase and sale. Okay. Um. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not quite uh, comfortable with not having a uh, end result here. 
Yeah. It's all uh, quite uh, complicated as far as I'm concerned. And I, uh, I'm not very comfortable with this at this point. I, I would have to say, you got to give me more. That it's going to, you know, I know I, I've got some guarantees here. I don't hear that. Uh, okay, I hear, I hear what you're saying. Um, there is a guarantee that the house couldn't be used until there was a, a resolution. There is um, a, a guarantee that we would need to come back to the board if there was an issue with the approval of the phosphorus tank for either an alternative technology or alternative use of the system. Um, <clears throat> so those, those items would be guaranteed. Um, if um, I'm trying to think of another maybe mechanism we can put in place is that we, we could say, if it didn't get approved, then they would, uh, we would have to come back to the board within a specific date. Um, and, um, you know, we could have, a, it, it wouldn't linger on. Um, they wouldn't be getting to final construction on the house. We could, we could put a specific date in there, perhaps to say in 90 days, we have to have this resolved or we got to come back to the board. Um, so maybe that would be because in 90 days, we're not, they're not going to go install it, build a house, install a system and everything like that. So you could essentially give them the 90 days uh, and then say, in this approval that you, you would grant tonight to say in 90 days, you need to have that permit in hand or you need to come back to modify your variance. Well, um, why? I mean, we're looking at 90 days. Uh, why can't that period be less? If you're saying they're going to lose a sale or whatever you're calling it, uh, I, I don't, I'm not quite understanding that that thought process right there. Why, why has it got to be 90 days? Why can't sure. It be 30 days? Why can't it be 30 days? Uh, it I, will. I yep, I can answer that for you. Um, so that that time, I think, would be necessary to first. Them. Deal with the plumbing board, which is going to take some time, and then DEP is at a standstill. So once the D, once the plumbing board is dealt with, and we get through them, then we go back to DEP, and then it starts their their process continues on, and, and nothing moves quickly over there at either of these uh, boards. So, I mean, and even getting a a, a simple uh, conservation permit. Um, could take 90 days to get a dock it takes a year so i mean it just takes time to go through this permitting process um I don't, I don't know about you, Ernie. Um, I do think that the time frame is kind of throwing me off a little bit of, as to how I, as to how I would like to move forward with this. Um, I don't know if you have any kind of moving forward thoughts on this. Um, are you, are you okay with this ninety day? Um, that's the thing. That's the thing that's kind of throwing me off. Where I'm like, okay, we're sitting on this for ninety days, yeah. and I understand where Matt's making his points, but I think the ninety days are kind of throwing me off. I would, I would, at the most, I would give a thirty month, I mean thirty day, condition to see, you know, where we, where we're standing with this whole thing. Um, just it feels as if like we're giving ninety days, as if like everything's up in the air, and that doesn't seem very feasible to me. Well, I can't agree with you more. I, I, I feel as though, you know, if you're going to if you're going to come back in ninety days, and we're going to give you that period, I want you to come back in thirty days. Yeah. Because I want. I think we need to keep control of it. What, I, what I'm saying on the, on the ninety days is that 
if we don't get through the board, we come back to you. If we get through everything and we get our permit, we hand it to Glenn and we're good. We don't need to come back to you. I'm saying the fail safe for you, the additional protection or guarantee is if we don't, in 90 days, it's a check-in. If we don't have it, we need to come back to you. If we do have it, then everything's good. We are meeting the requirements. All right, so final go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead, Ernie. It's okay. I was just wondering if there's any final comments by, by Glenn or even Christine too. Any anything they want to add or subtract or giving us all the information that you know we can try and make a decision on or if you have any any thoughts that um you might want to uh provide for us right now any any further thoughts um at, at this point the uh the approval of the buse system is in place it really comes down to the phosphorus unit um that that is also in process you know that uh the plumbing board has it um uh matt is correct as far as uh the the occupancy nothing will be granted until the septic is approved or they come back. Um, if you want to set a time frame um, on this uh, uh, approval of the disposal works construction permit, and then with a condition that they return in uh, whatever time frame you want to set is 30, 45, or 90 days. Um, Matt, how long has it been since the plumbing board has reviewed this? How long have they had it? I don't have an exact answer for you, but I know that this has been, I've been talking to these folks about this for the last probably 60 days or so. Um, I don't know how long they've had it and how much of the time was DEP asking them about the plumbing board and then talking to the plumbing board. I know there was a lot of back and forth in the beginning on that. I'm making a determination that in fact they had to go um, so that took up a bunch of time. Then the determination was made that they finally had to go. Um, so it's um, somewhere in the 30 to 60 day range, I would say. Um, I'm not 100% sure. But Glenn, let me ask a question for you. I just had a thought. And I don't know if this is even possible. Could you, could, you, could there be a sign off on the septic system for can you conditionally grant the sign uh the construction works permit the sign off on the septic for building permit purposes but not allow installation of the system until the dep approval has been handed i don't even have i doubt this has been done before but I, is that something that could be done i don't i don't think you can because the the, the permit itself is permission to install. So um, I don't think we can grant that issue a permit and then say, don't install the system. It, it is in conflict with the, the, direct, uh, uh, the, the direct reason for the permit. So I think that would be found not to hold any water if it were challenged. So um, I understand what you're saying. But that, that was my point initially, is once that permit is issued and the building permit is approved, there is no, nothing that will um, that can stop the construction of either the septic or, or, the, or the dwelling. So it, it, it does come down to holding occupancy uh, based upon both of those permits. So um, I think the I think the 90 days the way the DEP and the plumbing board move the 90 days is still probably a, a feasible amount of time that it's unlikely that we're going to see any approval from DEP or the plumbing board. So um, it might be actually helpful to us if we because what we would do would be passing this information immediately on to them saying look the board of health gave us 90 days to get through this we need to move this along. So that actually might be helpful in moving the process along. 
Yeah, their their administrative review. I mean, over the nine, 90 days is DEP's uh, administrative review of anything. But hopefully, we you've been through that on the Busse part of it. And um, I don't know. I've never dealt with the plumbing board as far as their whole technical review process, but they may have their own 90 day technical review up front as well. So um, it, it something that's important to point out too is that we're, we're not essentially going through a, an entirely new process. I mean, they have plumbing board approval for their Busse system. They have DEP approval for the Busse system. It's just the add on tank that we're just right. trying to get them to approve. Um, so it, we're not essentially recreating the wheel here. Right. So to answer your question, Ernie, that uh, that 90 day time frame I think is is feasible um, if you were to set that um, as a, a time to return to the board. Oh, in that case, uh, I will. Uh, I'll make a motion to grant the 90 days under those specific conditions, Glenn, that you have. Um, Kripani, do you mind reading those? Yep. Just the conditions, because uh, Ernie doesn't have them in front of him. Yep, no problem. So it would be that the condition would be that we're approving the disposal works construction permit with the condition that the occupancy of the dwelling shall not be granted until either the phosphor unit of the Busse system be approved or a composting, to composting toilet is installed. And the other condition would be that you would have to return to the board for a review within 90 days of this meeting day if nothing has moved further with the plumbing board or the DAP. Is that okay, Glenn? Um, anything else? No, that that is okay. I, um, I think that um, meets the requirement that it, it sets some standards and um, also allows the um, proponent to come back in 90 days and revisit um, and give us the status on where they're at. Okay. All right. All right. So um, I'll second that motion. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Thanks for working with us on that. Thank you. Oh. All right, moving on. Um, so the second thing on the agenda, or the, all right, number four on the agenda, hold, we have, oh, sorry, Ernie, go hold ahead. Up, hold up one second. My computer just came on. Oh, great. So I'm stupid. <laughs> And see what's going on now. All right. Let uh, us know when you're. Let us know when you're good to continue, Ernie. Please hold on. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's still acting stupid. Oh, I can't believe this. Go ahead. All I, right. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, but it's, it's on, but it's not doing a damn. I can see what we're, uh, some, that, uh, the meeting is showing, showing me, we have a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's about it. It, it, it. it ain't giving me anything else. Sorry, guys. Right, well, Go ahead. Well, let's Come see on. if I'll kick back on for you eventually. All right, so the next next in line we have is the review of nitrogen aggregation plan for 192 Fells Pond Road. And Matt, you're up again for that in a bit. So we'll just hear Glenn's comments first on that. Um, a nitrogen aggregation plan has been requested for this property at 192 Fells Pond Road, which is located in New Seabury. The open space area within the Child River East Subdivision is to be used as credit land for the undersized property to obtain the additional bedroom. In this case, 13,800 square feet of additional land is being utilized to obtain the 30,000 square feet required area for three bedrooms. The credit land survey plan and grants a Title V nitrogen loading restriction and easement for the facility and credit land have been provided. 
the fee has been paid and the plans and documents have been reviewed with no issues encountered. Septic design plans have not yet been submitted. Right. And Matt is here to represent that if you have any other questions. All right. Um, let me know if you want me to do a brief rundown. Yeah, I was just going to say, Matt, could you kind of fill in anything that maybe Glenn has not mentioned or anything you'd like to say on your part? Um, I'll just uh, briefly, I think um, uh, both of you are familiar with the nitrogen ag aggregation uh, plan process. We, we have our credit land uh, in our facility lands and we're uh, taking area from the credit land and applying it to the facility. Um, both of these properties are in the same zone too. Um, this allows us to use the uh, credit land in our nitrogen loading calculations. Uh, we're transferring over uh, 13,800 square feet. Our existing lot, um, which borders on a pond is 16,300 square feet. So we're gonna have a total of 30,100 square feet um, we, uh, for a three bedroom system. And with your nitrogen loading requirements into Title V, it's one bedroom per 10,000 square feet. We added a extra hundred square feet because the property board is on a pond and that can be, uh, sometimes you can't exactly calculate the square footage of a lot on a water body like that. So we just add a little buffer to be safe that we don't run foul of any um, calculation requirements. Um, and um, yeah, that, that's it in a nutshell. Okay, thank you. Um, just for clarification, you said the 100 square feet is kind of like your plus minus. Is that how I'm understanding I that? just, we, we add an extra 100 to make okay. sure we're okay. Yeah, um, okay. Because two surveyors could go out and survey the pond and come up with a little difference in where the pond location is. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, Ernie, you have any questions on that? No. Okay. I'm good. All righty. Um, wish I had Glenn, so. I was just kind of um I was just kind of questioning that because the septic design plans have not been submitted, is that do we still wait on that to kind of move forward with this, Glenn? Yes. Yeah, we've done that before where the septic plan has not been submitted at the same time. It's a, it, it's a totally separate plan uh, for a design plan. So it can be done at a later time. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, um, I, don't, I don't have any further questions. Um, Ernie, unless you do, um, you can move forward with the motion if you'd like. Kapani, uh, yeah. I think I have you on screen. Yes, I see you. I saw you, Ernie, and then you glimpsed away. <laughs> I, I'm trying to... Uh, Ernie, don't use your phone and the Zoom audio at the same time. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you through your phone. I think your Zoom audio connection is still trying to join. Okay, hold on a minute. This meeting is being recorded. He's got a mute. Yeah. Yeah, Ernie, you're getting feedback because of your phone. Glenn, can you mute him? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. There you okay. go. I'm on. There All you right. go. <laughs> nice job. Hey, welcome amazing. aboard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> I have brought this computer back a number of times, and I've had continuous problems with it. But uh, let's get back to the meeting. Sorry, folks. All right. Right ahead.
<laughs> or any do you uh would unless so i said um unless you don't have any questions we can move forward with the motion if you'd like yeah i don't have any questions i'll go forward okay uh, um can you do you have that motion to read yes yes if you if you'd like i can i can go ahead and do it um yeah so are you okay with the proof so we'll go ahead and make a motion to um, approve the nitrogen aggregation plan with the following conditions for 192 Fells Pond Road. Uh, the conditions being one, that the nitrogen aggregation plan is approved for the three bedroom plan for 192 Fells Pond Road. Um, and the draft grants of Title V restriction and easement must be finalized and recorded at the Registry of Deeds with an ex executed stamped copy provided by the Board of Health prior to issuance of the septic system installation permit and approval of the building permit. I will right. second motion. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. all set, Thank you very much. Right, Have a good Matt. night. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, um, Matt, for your patience. Thank you for working with us, Arnie. <laughs> To have a good night. Thank you too. All right, so we'll continue with the next business, next new business, a review of request for extension of Board of Health order at 197 Old Barnstable Road, estate of Bert Road, Bertie Road. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. You want me to go ahead? Yes, Glenn, please. Okay. Um, a request has been received from the family of the late Bertie Road, uh, owner of 197 Old Barnstable Road. A Title V inspection was conducted at the property on December 7th, 2021, with a determination of conditional pass due to a deteriorated distribution box and risers not being present. A letter was sent to Ms. Road uh, ordering that these items be corrected within 14 days of receipt. Mrs. Rhodes' children just completed probate and received letters of authorization are, and are in the process of making decisions regarding the future of the property. In light of the situation, they are requesting a six-month six extension on the deadline to replace the D-Box and install the required risers on all components. Okay. Oh. And Ms. Bernardi is here um, in the meeting to represent the property. Hello, Ms. Bernardi. Hello, thank you. Uh, <laughs> welcome. Um, is there anything you'd like to say? Um, really, the only thing I, it, it, it's an extension we're asking for. So my, my brother and I can understand our plan, the plans for the, for the, for the home in the future. And um, that's really unclear. The probate was just completed in December. So what we are asking is for time. We will, we did take the first step to, because we want to understand the condition of the septic system. Well, now we do. Um, and so now we're asking for that, that um, extension so we can understand, you know, what we're going to, what's going to happen with that property. And we know that septic, you know, it will be repaired, but we're just trying to get to the point where we know what, what our next step is for that home. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is the property being used right now? My brother is there right now, so it's not vacant. Okay. So he is there. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, all right, Ernie, do you have any questions regarding this? No. Okay. Um, it seems, I think it seems pretty straightforward in regards to, you know, just trying to get the hang of all of this after. Yeah. Um, after all this, so I have no questions either. Um, 
Bernie, if you would like to um, move forward with with the motion, I'm fine with that as well with the extension. Yeah, Glenn, did you, uh, yeah, have, have you looked at Glenn's comments on this? Um, yeah, I, uh, I had submitted comments. Ernie, your video is frozen up. Are you still there? Oh no! <laughs> uh, he's uh, he's all frizz up. There he is. There he is. There he is. <laughs> Thank just, heaven. We we it lost you for a second. Yeah. I mean, it, I'm getting all this stuff on my screen that you know. Internet's down, internet's up, internet's whatever. <laughs> and I'm sorry, would you go ahead? I guess I missed a little part there. I, <laughs> I think you're asking, <laughs> I think you're asking Glenn something in regards to the comments, so. <laughs> I did, yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I didn't, uh, it doesn't seem to be anything different in your comments, Glenn, is that correct? No, I don't have an issue with this. No. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'll uh, motion. We uh, grant, what is it, a short time? Yeah, it's a six month extension period. Ernie. Yeah, okay. Um, I'll make that motion. We grant a six month extension period. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, so I would just like to add on to that motion, if that's okay. Um, is that possible for me to do, Glenn? Yes, you can amend the motion. Okay, so um, I'm just amending the motion to add on uh, with the approval of that six month extension that the property transfer ownership prior to, should the property transfer ownership prior to six months happen, the repairs shall be made prior to the sale of that property. Okay. Yep, um, Yep. Awesome, okay. Um, Ernie, you good with that? Yes, I am. All right, so um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Who, who seconded that? Uh, Kripani, did you second Ernie's motion? Yes, also I, I seconded it. I amended it actually, Glenn. I don't know if, um, I think I think I was looking for a second from Ernie after that, if that was okay. I don't, I think I'm yeah, kind of- after you, Yes, after you uh, change, basically change the motion, I'll second it. Right. Now you can ask for, oh, you know, some favor in your favor. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, do we, should we do the vote again, Glenn? Yes, please. <laughs> All right. So, all those in favor with that amended motion <laughs> or the second. There you go. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Okay. We're good. All yeah. right. Thank you. You're all set. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, you, you. Receive a, you receive a decision letter um, stating the 90 days and the conditions that the board set. Six six months it was, wasn't it? Yes, I'm sorry, six months. Yes, okay, all right, great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank good you. Night. Thank you for your patience. Good night. <laughs> good night. Oh, good night. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, with that, uh, Glenn, would you like me to kind of go to number two and... Um, um, or would you would you yeah, like me to stick with number yeah, we, one? We have people waiting, so let's go to number right. two on old business. Okay, so with that, for old business, we have review of housing violations at 58 Buccaneer Way. Um, we have Harold Giancola, the owner, and then Linda Lamagma, who is the tenant. Um, Glenn, you can go ahead with your comments, please. Okay. Um, at the last meeting, the board considered the large amount of boxes placed at the property a nuisance and requested town council's guidance on how to proceed uh, if required time frames are not met. And council has not responded as of yet. So at, at this point, I wouldn't recommend taking any action. Um, the tenant is here 
um, at the meeting. Um, but at this point, I would not take any action until we hear from council. I agree. Okay. All right. Yep. I'm in agreement with that as well, Glenn. Thank you for your comments. Um, all right. Um, you need a motion. Do you, have any, do you have any questions for me? I'm Linda LaMagna. The, the Linda LaMagna is here. The tenant is um, on the board meeting. Um, uh, Linda has sent us a, an email with an, an update, uh, which I did forward to the board. So you do have her information. Um, but again, uh, it, it's up to you whether you want to discuss this on, until we hear from council. Um, we know that uh, uh, Linda is working on the property as her update has said, but um, I don't think there's really any more that we can do until we hear from council. Yeah, I don't, I'm, I don't, my opinion, I don't want to discuss until we hear from council. Yep, I'm in agreement with Ernie as well on that. Um, all right, Linda, thank you for hanging in there, but I think the board is all set at this time. Okay, well, I want to thank all of you for being so understanding. I really appreciate it. And I'm doing every single thing I can to get this problem solved as quickly as possible. And I, I'm very grateful to you that you've been as understanding as you have been. I really appreciate that a lot. Okay? Uh, all right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. All right. Um, all right, so moving on to business, we have review of request for variance from Sandwood Pond pumping and inspection at 9 Adequin Street, Kelly Robson. Um, go ahead, Glenn, with your comments. Okay, uh, request for an appeal of the order to pump and inspect the septic system at 9 Adequin Street has been submitted. Uh, the owner requested a continuance for the last meeting of 16 December 21. Uh, I know that the owner works at DPW and is out of the office until January 7th. And the owner um, was not notified of the continued hearing. So that hearing was postponed until this meeting. Uh, the owner stated that they were going to hire a land surveyor to see if the property met the 300 foot setback that was used to include properties in the survey. And Kelly Robeson, who is a co-owner, is on the meeting. Good evening, guys. How are you? Good. How are you, Kelly? Good, good. There was a couple of questions that we had had in regards to the mapping that was put out and how the board or the town is determining the location of Santuit Pond. I was given maps um, and I pulled them off of our GI, out the town's GIS. And the markings on the map look like they're actually on the property for 111 Timber Lane <clears throat> Drive and not the actual pond. My property is 200, hold on one second, 297 feet from that mark at the back of the property at 111 Timberlane Drive. So what we're trying to do is get clarification of where this mapping came from and how the pond is determined. Because from looking at the maps that we're looking at, the marks that were given to us are the woods, it's not the pond. Okay, so um, Clay and GIS was questioned as far as the um, how it was determined, but we we took the, um, the the same map was used for everyone, and if it touched the property lines, basically from the setback from the the GIS that one layer for that for the location of the pond that they had, and if it touched the property lines, then that property was included in the survey. So um, again, we it was the same map that was used for all of the other properties. So we were consistent. I, I, I understand that. that, but where, who is determining where the pond ends and where the woods begin? 
Oh, I, I believe it was done by um, aerial photograph overlays, which is how GIS works. So and those, and these, these maps are over 10 years old, according to Clay. Uh, as far as the last aerial, that's correct. That's possible. That's what we have on record and that's what we use. So no, then, like said, that's completely understandable. But these these how can these maps be be used for for legal conveyance of an order when it's it strictly states that they cannot be? The maps are made for inventory assessing parcels only and cannot be used for legal conveyance or description purposes. States it right on the site. I can understand if more than four feet of the back corner of my property was within this 300 foot buffer, but there's so much wiggle room that how am I supposed to know looking at what I'm looking at, that that's actually where the pond is. Those are my concerns. My septic system is 10 years old. I get it pumped like it's supposed to. I know there are others that don't, I understand. Um, but we're looking for clarification of the actual map. Because if that mark, if that little tiny mark at the at the back property of 111 Timberlane Drive was moved three feet back to where the pond maybe actually is, my property would not be in there. So I don't know if, if Ernie and Krapani have access to the GIS maps and can pull it up, but there literally is a fingernail of my property within that 300 foot buffer. And I know it doesn't matter where my septic is because my septic's on the other side, my, I've, I've had that conversation with Glenn. I am not gonna make any comments on anything that isn't uh, other than what we have, including to records that are in place at this time. I am not gonna look at anything and, and guess. So I don't know how you want to handle this, but uh, I, I don't have any, uh, what I would consider factual information to make any determination here. I'm just kind of trying to find that, find the maps. Um, um, one of the questions I have for, for you, that's kind of, you know, taking out your map, the mapping part that you're talking about is that we've been in this um, surveying part for a while now, for several months now, and you are appealing a little bit later than that. So what kind of drew you to have such a late appeal to this issue that's been kind of presented for several months now to you? I've actually been speaking with Glenn since the letters came out to us about it. Okay. And his answer to me has always been, it has to go in front of the board. Okay. That was all here. I found out from Joe Callahan how to actually get in front of the board. So I have been asking questions. I have been asking questions about the mapping. I went to Clay at the town hall in IT and I asked him about it. And he's the one who is pretty much telling me that this, this mapping isn't, it's not 100% accurate and it's not supposed to be being used for these purposes. So you're, you guys are legally telling all of us homeowners within the 300 foot buffer of Santuit Pond that we need to get pumped and we need to get inspected according to this map, but this map is not supposed to be used for legal purposes. Sounds like we need legal opinion, but Yeah, I was gonna say, is this something we can ask counsel about? Or? I'm not, I'm or, not a, go ahead. Oh, uh, no, I was just, um, it's either that or she, 
she goes to the superior court to make to make this formal appeal. Like I said, if I, if I was my if I was my neighbor who I would say seven eighths of their property right. is within that three hundred foot buffer, I would have no argument, none whatsoever. Well, uh, the mapping part is one thing, but um, you said that you pumped. Did you provide anything to us to say that you pumped? Yep. Yeah. L Linda, Linda actually had sent me um, a list of my pumping since we bought the house back in, okay. I think it was 2013. So okay. she has the most recent one, which was done in 2021. Okay. And I know you guys have a problem with people actually sending you that information. So I'm going to make sure moving forward that I collect the information from the pumper and send it to you personally myself, because we know that they don't always do that. Yeah, the pumpers are not great about turning in there. Yeah, their unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I think I'm on Ernie with this. Well, I would, would like to have a more legal guidance on this um i don't have much say on this right now yeah i don't have an answer for this either as far as the maps it's just something that we use consistently um but um one one thing that uh that that was discussed too was to to have a land surveyor check it um and it, and there, there was a question whether the the town would cover that or the um, have the owner provide that. And my comment to that was that it's the owner who's refuting the maps right now that we've used consistently on all the other properties. So it's my opinion that it would be, it would fall upon the owner to do that. So, um, but if you'd like to um, get um, a further clarification on the use of the maps, then we can do that. I would just need a vote from the board to um, get that from council. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, do we have a motion then? Um, unless you have yeah, anything I, else. I, I, I do have a motion to uh, uh, seek advice from council on this issue. Right, right. Um, I second that motion. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I'll Aye. put that through. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, Kelly, Kelly, we'll let you know we have an answer. All right, thank you guys very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good night. You too, thank you. All right. Um, Gwen, I'm just going to keep moving. Um, Moving down the line, if that's okay, and then we can come back to the COVID update, or would you like to cover that first? Um, I have actually one more thing that we need to add in um, under new business, and I okay. need a, a motion to add it to the agenda. It's something that I overlooked as far as getting on the agenda, but it needs to be added um, because it has to do with an enforcement action. Okay. Um, do yeah. we have a motion? It, it, it's about Mashby Shell um, 135 Main Street tobacco violation. Okay. Um, all right, Ern, Ernie, would you like to go ahead and make that motion if, to add that to the agenda? Yes, I will make that motion. All right. Um, I second that motion. Um, all, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, so there was um, another violation at the uh, Route 135 uh, Mashpee Shell. Um, the letter was sent out to the owner, and the owner has hired an attorney, and the attorney just got um, notice of it, and so he has requested a continuance until the February 3rd meeting. Now, I think that that is a, a valid um, request. 
Um, Rob Mills is the attorney and he has um, represented the owner before. So um, I think uh, to be consistent and fair that we need to grant that um, extension or that uh, continuance. And I did receive the continuance in writing from the attorney. Okay. Um, yeah, I would. So, so all we really need is a motion to continue to February eighth. Is that correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. I'll make that motion. Okay. All right. So. Um, you second it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I. I second that. I second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Um. All right. So, um. So next in line, we have discussion of the Title Five failures in Phase One sewer project. Um, okay, I um I did uh, as we were having a joint meeting on Monday with the selectmen. I did prepare uh, a memo as an update and sent that upstairs. Um, but I also forwarded it to you. Um, that um. So, uh, the at the previous meeting, the board had asked um, to be notified of um, of any failures in phase one. And so uh, we do have a couple of uh, properties that have failed systems. Um, but something that um, we discussed in the office is that um, we, we can bring those um, properties to you to notify you. But if there's uh, any discussion of an extension based upon Title V allowing up to a five-year extension be granted, it really should be the owner who is requesting that. So what we've done is uh, we have uh, come up with a, a, a letter notifying the uh, property owner that uh, the, pro the septic system has failed and then giving them the options uh, as far as what to do and um, uh, re replacing or repairing the system or um, requesting the five-year extension, which needs to be done in front of the board and ultimately will require um, an agreement to be drawn up between the board and the owner. So um, at, the, at this point, that's, uh, that's where we're at. I don't, um, did not forward a copy of that letter to you, but um, I can do that. Um, it's still in draft form, but we are going to try to use that to send that out to the owners um, to notify them of, of their options. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. When you say there's two, yeah, right, say, right now, yeah, right now we have two properties. Okay. Um, so uh, we'd like to notify those owners and have them come forward. Um, but I can uh, present at least the details of the properties to you um, as they come in. It's just that I, I think it really should be the owner who is, if they're, if they're going to 
talk about an extension, it really needs to be the owner that requests that. I agree. Okay. Yeah. So pretty much they'd be the ones coming in to these meetings for the for the hearing. Yeah. Yeah, okay. because there there's gonna be a binding agreement that has to be made. Um and we should probably come up with a an, uh, an agreement or see if the other towns have used an agreement so that we can have set up a template for that. Because that really, I think that should is also pretty straightforward because it's just a matter of saying that you have to keep your system pumped so it doesn't create a, a nuisance. Um, right. and, and there's several other conditions, um, but I think that is should be all relatively boilerplate as well. Okay. After uh, listening, listening to the previous uh, comments made, uh, how can we uh, create a order? Pumpers have five days, three days, one day. We want to. We want the report, not linger on and never come. And if they don't give us the report, they're fine. What do we have to do to prove that, to do that? Because we have a situation like this or any others that's constantly being pumped. It's gotta be done by- I don't wanna hear, I don't wanna hear their uh, dragging their feet. I want the report. It's got to be done by a regulation. If we're going to shorten the time frame, what is the time frame? Yeah, I was just about to ask. Or are you, are you talking about providing the pumping records, Ernie? Mm -hmm. Well, you 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 just commented part of what will be required will be certain pump in certain times, et cetera, right? Well, they, they, they just have to pump it so that it doesn't back up or flow right. to the surface of the ground. There, there's no time frame associated with that specifically. They just have to make sure that it does not create a health hazard. There's no specific time associated with that. Okay, how do we monitor that? A well, sir, says I'm overflowing. Sir, if, if it breaks open to the surface of the ground, we usually get a phone call from the neighbor. Um, okay. I can't I can't swear to you as far as it backing up. If there is a tenant in that uh, dwelling, we will definitely hear about it if it's a rental property. Um, if it's a, a owner occupied, um, we may not hear about it backing up, but I can pretty much guarantee that once it does back up, they're going to get it pumped. Um, so, and if, if it breaks out to the surface of the ground and they don't take care of it in a timely fashion, we've issued $500 fines for that. So, um, that those are things that the board has not messed around with in, in the past. That's good. Um, can we require uh, a pumper to notify us when it's going to go pump? Well, you could require the owner to get a contract with a pumper to go and do that on a regular basis. That is something that the board can do as part of that agreement. Okay. I just want to put a little more teeth in it. Yeah. If we can, if whatever's legal. I don't want to. Oh, no, ab it. absolutely. It, it's if the board is looking to confirm that there's no health hazards that is absolutely within their purview to do that and uh and up to the owner to sign it or not sign it okay so this is kind of a question i had kind of um in line with what ernie has been asking and talking about is that we we ask for the pump and re pumping reports once they're done but is there a time frame for when that report is submitted to the board of health is there a is there a time frame or is there something legally in place? Okay, Title Five says fourteen days. Okay. Oh, so. Okay. But but um, we we kind of ask for the so that we don't keep getting 
um, all, all the different uh, addresses at different times, we do kind of ask the, the, at least the office staff for the, the pumpers to provide them either monthly or quarterly in, in, a, in an Excel sheet where we can easily repopulate our list using Excel. And that, okay. that's something that we've kind of put in place so that we're not, you know, putting numbers in every day um, into a database that we only really need to visit, you know, maybe monthly or quarterly. Mm -hmm. Just trying to make it more um, streamlined in the office. Okay. Thanks. But there, there is a 14-day requirement within Title V. Okay, thank you. All right. All right, Ernie, do you have any more concerns or questions? No. Okay, um, neither do I, so it's okay to move on to the next. Yeah, next please, please, person. please take a look at the rest of that memo. There's more information on the Santuit Pond survey and, um, and, uh, and the, the sewers part of it, which we'll talk about on Monday. Okay. Okay, all right, thank you. Bye. All right. Bye. Um, Bye. Yes. I'm sorry. Give me a second. I gotta let my dog in. No, that's okay. I'm crying and it's. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Uh, Christine, Sorry. <laughs> Christine has corrected me is um, that we're we're not going out quarterly. We do it monthly as far as the the um, pumping reports, and uh, okay. the pumpers have been good about that. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, all right. So with that, with the last thing we have. Um, the COVID-19 update? Yep, the COVID-19. Okay, as of January 8th, the 14-day uh, percent of positivity rate in Mashpee was 16.38%, and the average daily incident rate was 152.2. As of this meeting, Mashpee has 148 current cases in isolation that have been reported. As of this week, the average number of cases reported throughout Barnesville County has been lower than the previous week, indicating that the peak from 1-3 to January 11th may be ebbing. As of Wednesday, the average hospitalizations over a three-day period was 73, with nine of those being ICU patients. Uh, the requested Board of Health townwide mask advisory um, that the board wanted uh, requested at the last meeting was recently approved by the town manager for inclusion on our website and social media pages. Uh, additionally, it has been sent along to Mashpee TV, Mashpee Food Establishments, the Library, and Council on Aging. On January 3rd, 2022, we transitioned from the VNA to the County Health Department for case investigations. The county service was being provided at no cost to the town at, uh, as the program was funded through a grant. 
Initially, we were unsure that this arrangement would meet our needs and the needs of the school, as we had not received any updates from the county as of January 18th. After reaching out to the county directly, we learned that they are operating under a surge protocol, which essentially allows for them to use text notifications versus phone calls for everyone other than the senior population. Additionally, we learned from conference calls with DPH and discussions with our contact at the VNA that the state is moving to a model of personal responsibility and contact tracing is no longer recommended for individual cases who are not either attending grades K through 12 or considered to be part of an at-risk population. As time allows, the county does hope to be able to resume contacting all cases, but based on the new model, we anticipate a reduced level of contact tracing slash reporting than we are accustomed to seeing. The majority of the guidance we are providing at this juncture is to town employees, department heads, and human resource personnel. We're getting low numbers for calls each week from residents and businesses with questions about isolation and quarantine requirements for close contacts. The second pediatric clinic for five to 11 year olds was held at Christ the King Parish Hall on January 8th. 36 children received their second dose of the Pfizer vaccine. We held a booster clinic at Christ the King Parish Hall on January 11th, where we vaccinated approximately 140 residents. We had a number of cancellations due to the single digit temperatures that day. The clinic went smoothly, thanks to the church and the VNA, and we are in the process of scheduling another clinic in February with dates to be determined. Uh, we continue to refer homebound residents to the VNA for in-home booster shots and the general public to the clinics offered at the County Complex and Cape Cod Community College. We also continue to refer <laughs> residents to the test sites at the fairgrounds, as well as the new Stop the Spread site at the Melody Tent. We recently acquired a small supply of rapid tests from the Community Health Center, which are earmarked for distribution to at-risk populations. Additionally, the counting is placing a bulk order of test kits this week or next, and we were subsequently authorized by the town manager to expend up to $2,500 of our COVID budget to purchase 250 kits through this process. We indicated our interest to the county, but are unsure how we will take delivery of those. We continue to participate in weekly conference calls with MassDPH and other local boards of health to update the COVID page on the town website and to maintain the COVID case tracker and provide daily updates to the town manager and emergency dispatch services. Additionally, we remain in close contact with Mashpee Recreation Department, as well as the school nurse coordinator to track cases that impact or have the potential to impact students, staff, and the public. Thank you, Glenn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, at Christine. least we're still getting people vaccinated, so this is good. Right, yeah. yeah we're hoping that we get more uh, for next month's booster clinic. But Christine prepared that, and she's been doing the bulk of the COVID response, which has been um, non-stop to say the least. Oh, I'm sure. Thank you, Christine. Um, have we had anyone um, bring up any issues about the mask advisory that we put out the announcement? No. Okay. No, I think that was a great idea. Yeah, I think you see some. You see what we've discussed last last time as well, where we have a set few, set set of people who are following the protocol, of wearing masks and stuff, and we have those the few that don't and stuff. So, so yeah, I'm glad that we are getting our vaccine numbers up too. So it's good. Mm. All right, Ernie. Yeah, Ernie. If, if you want to see it, it is on the website. If you want to take a look at the, uh, yeah, uh, at the advisory. 
Yeah, I know somebody took a um, a picture of it from in their of the newspaper where it was posted. So I was really happy to see that. Um, but yeah, Ernie, any any comments? Any questions? <laughs> no, I just uh, as as always amazed at when and Christine and the workload they got yes <laughs> and how they handle it i just appreciate so much how hard these folks are trying to accommodate this ongoing uh problem of you know everyone being so concerned and having to do whatever they have to do or feel they want to do and the good great advice coming from glenn and christine and I think it's wonderful. Yes, oh, we appreciate it. I agree with that. Um, I'm glad you guys are getting that the low number of calls as well, because I know a lot of people were in frantic trying to figure out everything as well. So and it's nice that we're getting some kits as well, because um, but I'm hoping that we're also giving out the information that not to rely completely or solely on those home kits as well. Um, I know that's been a little concern about people to where they strongly rely on those home kits and not actually go out within those three to five days to actually get the PCR testing done too. So um, I'm hoping that people are aware of that portion. Yeah, we, um, we'd like to get more where we can give them out to the public, but we're getting them in limited numbers. So yeah. we kind of have to stick to just giving, giving them out to the at-risk population. So um, yeah, no, I'm I'm really happy that we are able to supply those too. This is great. All right. Um, all right, let's see. Yes. I just want to let you know that um, the, the new recommendations are that if they're taking the rapid test, if they're taking the home test and it's positive, they're, they're not recommending that they follow it up with the PCR, which is okay. a, a change. Okay, no, that's good to know. I was, I, I think I've been concerned about the false positives and the po false negatives too. So I don't know where we stand on that part. Cause I know we've, t I know they've discussed the idea of um, PCR being a bit more concrete on that aspect. So that's good to know actually. Um, so they're saying the antigen test um, in order for that to pick up to, you know, pop positive, you need to have a pretty heavy viral load. So that's okay. why antigen test is, you know, they're saying if you get positive with that, it's because you, you are definitely infected and um, you don't okay. need to follow up with a PCR. So. Okay, great. No, thank you for that. Thank you for clarifying that for me. Thank you. Um, all right. I think... I think with that we're kind of kind of done with the meeting. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. There would there is one other item, but it would have to be done in executive session. And unfortunately, Ernie has notified me that um, it's uh, an item that he cannot sit on, and he would recuse himself if we brought it up. So there is um, at no uh, quorum, so there's no uh, ability to discuss that. Um, as Brian is not here. So at this point, I have nothing further. Okay, thank you. All right, so I guess we'll discuss that at the next meeting when Brian is with us. Um, all right, so I guess a motion to adjourn then. <laughs> I'll make that motion. To <laughs> all right, um, I second that motion. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. I'll close the hearing. All right. Good Thank job. Thank you. Honey. <laughs> Have a good night. Sorry, I Thank stuck you. it on you. <laughs> no, that's okay. Thank you. Thank you for. <laughs> Thank you for being patient with me. It's. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate well, that. <laughs> two newcomers. We we did all right for being two newcomers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll say so. <laughs> as long as Glenn and Christine are happy with us. <laughs> well, you guys did fine. Yeah. All right, good night. Thank you. Thank you, Bye, Thank you Christine. Bye. Bye. Have a good night, Ernie. Good night.